dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly, we hail, starring Broderick Crawford in Surrealist Love. United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where Hollywood's finest talent from the stage and screen join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that famous actor of Broadway and Hollywood, Broderick Crawford, and the title of our play, Surrealist Love, a story of romance and sparkling comedy. We'll have the curtain for Act One of Surrealist Love in just a moment. But first, here's our announcer with a message of importance. Only the best can be aviation cadets. And if you can qualify and are selected, you will receive the finest pilot training course. To qualify, you must be between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half. You may be either married or single. You must or be able to pass an equivalent exam thorough training. You will win your silver wings and receive a reserve commission in the United States Air Force. Apply tomorrow at your nearest Air Force base or U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And remember, only the best can be aviation cadets. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Surrealist Love, starring Broderick Crawford as Joe Gleason. <laughs> Joe Gleason, the new pastry cook at the hotel, to the cute little waitress named Mamie. But as yet, she hasn't had much success. Mamie has set her sights on bigger game, on an ex-GI whose own little lunch counter. But Mamie. For the whole. I told you before, cooks. I'm going to marry... You don't have to marry me. Just look, all I'm asking for is a date. Just, just to the movies or something. I know, I know. But what about... What about it? I'll tell you. The moon is shining. We walk through the park. You hold my hand. Mm. What's... How am I going to remember I got to marry a rich guy when a good-looking guy like you tries to kiss me in the moonlight? Oh, gosh, Mamie. I'll promise not to try to kiss you if, if that'll make you change your mind. See? What did that do to my self-confidence? I think I... So let me kiss you. Yeah. That's right. I wouldn't have to. Or would I? I know what the moonlight does to me, Joe. Just thinking about it makes me forget my dream man. What's this... What's this dream guy like? He's got a million dollars. Or almost a million. I ain't asking you how much he's got. I'm I'm asking you what he's like. Well, what's the difference what he's like? I can always close my eyes when I kiss him. Oh, you make me sick. The same to you and many of them. <laughs> I can always tell when you're mad, Joe. You always tear off some of that butcher paper and start painting pictures with frosting. Yeah, and this time I'm, I'm going to paint a picture of that dream man of yours. Uh-huh. <laughs> First his head. Now his body. Oh, you got him all out of proportion. That great big head and that funny little body. That shows what you know about art. This here is a new kind of art. Surrealist, that's what they call it. Galahad. It still looks screwy to me. And now the chocolate frosting. We'll paint his hair... And a nice mustache. Oh, mustaches are out of date. And so are rich millionaires. They're old and bald. Like this. Oh, Joe, that's horrible. Even with my eyes closed, I couldn't kiss a guy that looked like that. Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that guy's coffee. I'd better run. Hey, what about our date? Hey, Mamie, Mamie! Oh, oh, manager, I want the man... I insist on speaking to the manager. What is it, sir? What's happened? What's happened? What's happened? What I, I... My stars and goddess, it couldn't be worse. Will you please explain, explain sir? Oh, yes, we'll explain. try to make it right, whatever it's it is. It's abominable, that's what it is. Happened. Here, I've had my soup. Or I've discovered... Discovered what, sir? A fly. Oh? Right in my soup. Oh. I might have swallowed him. Hmm. Uh, the very thought of it makes me ill. Please calm down, sir. Uh, We're sorry, but we'll certainly rectify the matter. Uh, Waitress, bring this man another bowl of no, soup. No, 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 no. I couldn't touch it. I couldn't touch it. In fact, but, uh, sir, I, I very much doubt if I could ever eat anything else prepared in this hotel. But a thing like this could happen anywhere. 
As a matter of fact, we have the cleanest kitchen in the city. Oh, you have? After this ghastly experience, I'd have to see it to believe that. We'd be very glad to have you see it, sir. Oh, you would. You'd be very glad to have me. Well, I, I think I'll take you up on this. But mind you, if I do go through your kitchen and I see anything at all untidy about it, I shall report you to the health department. This way, please. Here, right through the swinging door. Get away. Oh, 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 excuse me, mister. Oh, 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 sir. I sure am sorry. I'm very sorry, sir. Oh, you're sorry. Oh, well, I should think so. Oh. Why don't you look where you're going, young lady? Well, why don't you go where you're looking? Here, I'll wipe the soup off your coat. The soup off my coat? Oh, okay. oh, 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 this is the last straw. Absolutely the last straw. I shall certainly withdraw my patronage from this hotel. But there. Um, It'll dry in a few minutes. Oh, dear. Come on over here and stand by the oven. Oh, It'll dry before you know it. Uh, thanks, Mamie. I'll uh, leave them to you. Take good care of them, Mamie. Mm -hmm. What happened, Mamie? Well, this yeah, guy... What happened? Uh, what happened? This young lady only tried to give me a shower with the soup. That's what happened. I never was so exasperated in all my life. But how did I know you'd be coming through that swinging door? Customers don't usually come back here. I came to inspect your kitchen. What's the matter with my kitchen? That's what I came to find out. I got a fly in my soup. No. <laughs> I got to go back to the customers, Joe. You see that his soup gets dry. Okay, Mamie. So you got a fly in your soup. I did. I almost swallowed it, too. Don't tell me. Yes. Oh, it makes me positively ill just to think of it. You're making me shudder. Yes, so I decided to inspect this kitchen to see if it conforms to the laws of health. That's a good idea. Just have a gander. Yes. I beg your pardon. Just take a look. And, uh... Oh, my. Oh, my. My stars and goddess. That picture. Oh, don't let that guy scare you. He's just something I dreamed up to scare Mamie. You mean... You mean that you painted this? Sure. My good man, let me touch you. Huh? Oh, this is the most perfect example of surrealist art that I have ever seen. And I am an authority. It is? Oh, what feeling, what dynamic symmetry. What, what? What do you call it? Call it? Oh, yes, your title. Every picture has a title. Oh, well, uh... I, I call it the, uh, uh, the awful rival. The awful rival. Oh, how interesting. What is that new medium you've painted with? New medium? Yes, it isn't watercolor. It isn't oil. Oh, it's, it's... oh you mean the stuff I, I, I painted the picture with? Yes, huh? it has such delicate color. It's so realistic. It's sort of, oh, it's sort of three-dimensional, uh, one might say. Might one? Yes, I'm sure it's something you worked out for yourself. Hmm? <laughs> Some little secret, possibly? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, you will make a fortune, my man, a fortune. A fortune? Say, maybe then maybe... I am positively enraptured with this work. Are you kidding? Oh, now, don't be facetious there. No need for false modesty. Huh? When may I see some of your other work? What, what other work? Your other paintings. I must see all of them. And if they're as good as this piece, I'll arrange for you to exhibit them at the museum. And your fortune will be made. My fortune? Oh, Mamie. <laughs> you haven't answered my question. When may I see your other work? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. Thursday's my day off. Now, you come to my house Thursday night. I'll have plenty for you to see. <laughs> Hurry, Mamie. We gotta think up titles for all of them before the guy gets here. Titles? Are they kings or queens or something? Oh, Mamie, you don't understand. Every picture like this has got to have a name. Why? I don't know, so... So they can tell what it is, I guess. But you don't know what half of them are yourself, do you? No, but... But I figure they must look like something, and between the two of us, we ought to be able to figure something out. Well... This one looks sort of like a fried egg. Maybe we could call it the Egg and I. No, that's a movie. Oh. We gotta be more original. I know. Let's call it... Sun in Smog. Say, that's real poetical. What do we call this dame? Mm, let's call her, uh, the Twisted Soul. Oh, Joe, you're wonderful. If you only had money. You're telling me it. Hey, Mamie, why are you so set on money? Because I don't like you to rob banks to get a mink coat. Oh, uh, hello, Joe. Hello, Horace. Yes, hello, I thought I'd never get here. Just never get here. That taxi driver couldn't seem to find the street. You remember, Mamie? Uh, remember her? Could I ever forget her? 
I hope you've had some lessons, young lady, in balancing soup. <laughs> well, at least now I whistle before I come through a swinging door. Yeah, uh, uh, you do. But I must see the paintings. I've told my friends about you, and they cannot wait to see your work. Well, here they are. Yeah. Uh, all these? Why, that is marvelous. That's absolutely marvelous. And all done in that new medium. And this one here. This one is called Sun in Smog. Sun in Smog. Well, I never saw anything like that. Oh, what imagination. What feeling. What sweet and rhythm. I still think it looks more like a fried egg. Yeah, stick to your soup, young lady. You obviously don't know art. And I suppose you do. Uh, uh, Mamie, Mamie, uh, uh, suppose, suppose you run out and make us a cup of tea. Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, dear, yes, dear. I just adore tea. Now then, you must let me exhibit your work. Why, you can make a fortune. A fortune? Oh, boy. Good looks and money, too. I won't have to close my eyes. <laughs> now then, just sign this agreement. Agreement? What does it say? Why, just that you agree to pay me 10% of the proceeds uh, for my trouble. Okay, that's fair enough. We'll put sun and smog right here. I still think it looks more like a fried egg. Never mind what you think, Mamie. The museum has it printed in the catalog, sun in smog. That's what it's got to be. Okay. There, that does it. It's the last one. Say, the gold frames make them look real elegant. At this mess before the newspaper boys get here. Oh, there's a fly on the awful rival's nose. <laughs> I should have painted one on it. Looks natural, doesn't it? Hey, there are half a dozen flies on them. Oh, Joe, look at the others. There are flies all over all the pictures. Oh, my gosh, it's the frost. Close the windows, quick. Okay. Oh, we'll have to do something, Joe. We can't have the pictures covered with flies. I'll go out and get some fly spray. That's, that's what they use at the hotel. Oh, hurry, Joe. The exhibit is going to start in ten minutes, and we'll never get through. We pause briefly for my story, Surrealist Love, starring Broderick Crawford, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of members of the United States Army and United States Air Force are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. <laughs> 